and you remember the clinicians, the physicians that really took care of you and took care of your family as though you weren't just a number. And that is, I think is the biggest motivator for my initial reason for even entering into medicine. Welcome back to the Dr. Crockett Show. I'm your host, Dr. Susan Crockett. I'm coming to you every Tuesday from San Antonio, Texas, where I'm a board-certified OBGYN. And I practice a special kind of OBGYN called minimally invasive GYN surgery or MIG surgery. And what that means is I do robotic surgery, and it's a lot of fun because I help a lot of women. I am really super excited today. We are calling this show... Uh, um, <laughs> what am I calling it? Edit. <laughs> I'm super excited today. We are calling the show today, Welcoming in the New. It is the 100th episode, y'all, the 100th episode of Becoming Virtuosa, our podcast. So those of you that are friends of ours from the show know that we started the the Dr. Crockett show on YouTube in mid-2023, and this is like episode 60-something of that. But prior to that, in 2020, I had started with a podcast that's available on Apple and Spotify and all the places that you listen called Becoming Virtuosa. And I started that as a place where we would start talking about wellness and how we work towards becoming the best versions of ourselves, because we believe that's how we make the world around us better, is we start encouraging each other and becoming the best versions of ourselves. So... To welcome in the new, which is our 100th episode, I have an incredibly special guest today. This is Dr. Sonia Koshi. Hello. (laughs) It's good to be here. Sonia is my new MIGS surgeon. She is joining our practice this month, and I have wanted somebody to help me with my mission. Um, We always talk on this show about going where the scalpel doesn't reach Mm -hmm. because most of what we talk about is wellness, but I'm bringing somebody on with you today, y'all, who is helping me with the scalpel for those of you that need help, and she is fantastic. I want you to kind of get to know her a little bit today. We're going to talk about her background and just introduce her to you. And uh, Sonia, I'm so glad for you to finally be here. It seems like it's been forever waiting to welcome you in and welcome. I know. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here and I'm really excited to get started. Right? Yes. It's uh, been it's been enough time. Because <laughs> this mix thing is such a new field. There's not that many of us. Right. And for us to be in a place where we can really concentrate on doing the best surgery for women and having the best outcomes and making it as easy as possible for them... Like, I don't know of any other place where we have this in a private practice in the United States. That's it's, absolutely true. It's really cool. And this is where medicine sh- is heading and should be heading. Yeah. And really, it's getting the most trained people to do the harder surgeries, but also yep. do the everyday, all your needs as well. Yep. So, so Dr. Koshi and I are going to be working mostly in the operating rooms. We'll be training other surgeons. Mm-hmm. We'll be tripling the amount of GYN volume that we're doing in the next year. We're opening up Methodist... Uh, Northeast Hospital's new, brand new HOPD, that mm-hmm. stands for Hospital Outpatient Department. And uh, it has just been designated as an epicenter by Intuitive Surgical for women's outpatient surgery. Lots of cool things coming. We're going to have an uh, opening um, video for the ribbon cutting for the HOPD coming. Mm-hmm. And you'll be part of that too. Yes, so y'all stay tuned. We are having just so much happening here. But before we get too much further into that, could you just tell our listeners, our patients, your background a little bit, where you came from and what your education level is and and yeah, who you are? Absolutely. So obviously, my name is Sonia Koshi. I am born and raised in Texas. I'm from Houston. And I am finally back after a long time. So I went to college and grad school in Houston, but then I left for medical school. I went to Alabama College of Osteopathic Medicine. Cool. After that, I finished my residency at the University of Toledo, and I did a minimal invasive gynecologic surgery fellowship 
in South Florida, just outside of Miami. That's, I love Florida. That's, yes. And they've got incredible training programs in yes, Florida. Yes, they do. Mm-hmm. I actually worked with a team of four G1 oncologists as well as a minimally invasive trained uh, faculty member. So it was a great experience. And now I am finally back in my home state where I belong. <laughs> and getting to put into practice what you've been training for Absolutely. all these years. Absolutely. So I'm pretty excited about this. I did not go through fellowship training for robots. I'm a, what you call a goat. <laughs> Yes, that's true. <laughs> yeah, I started in 2009 and learned as it was being introduced. And so to have somebody that's fellowship trained now mm-hmm. coming in is super exciting for me. I'm looking forward to learning what you have learned from your mm-hmm. mentors and mm-hmm. your teachers. Uh, and I'm looking forward to sharing with you and our viewers what uh, what I do. One of the things we were just talking about, as a matter of fact, is we're getting ready to launch a teaching Uh, more teaching videos on this channel. Yes. So we'll still be bringing some of the wellness stuff to you, but we want to start training, showing you videos of what we're doing, talking a little bit more about what we do in benign gynecology. We do a lot of fertility work, a Mm -hmm. lot of fibroids, endometriosis, and all Mm -hmm. that. And uh, we're, this new era is not just me having somebody like you coming in. It's my practice changing from being one of doing a whole lot to actually reaching out and teaching and do right. case observations and all those things. So um, welcome. Thank you. I wanted to talk with you a little bit about things beyond just the operating Absolutely. room. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about your philosophy about being a doctor and what other things do you like? Tell, uh, you know, I think our patients like to know that sure. we're fun people behind. Sure. That we're human beings, yeah. not just doctors. Yes. Um, well, I think, I mean, that kind of all starts into the reasons why you enter medicine. And I think a lot of it is when you go through experiences um, with family members and things, you remember the people that made you feel Heard that made you feel as heard. though heard absolutely yeah not hurt no heard. not hurt <laughs> not, not hurt heard heard yeah. um, and you remember the clinicians the physicians that that really took care of you and took care of your family as though you weren't just a number and that is I think is the biggest motivator for my initial reason for even entering into medicine and then as you go through the process women's health is really just an area that. It hits close to home because it's your own life. Right. It's your mother. It's your sisters. It's your grandmother. It's every, uh, your children. Every part of you know your day to day existence is affected by that. And as a woman, I feel like that's something that we're all called to do something. And I feel like I could do well in that Taking area. Taking care of women, absolutely. You yeah. know, I kind of came to that kind of similarly. I initially wanted to be a plastic surgeon and uh-huh. ended up in women's health. And it's mm-hmm. just been, I have just really enjoyed taking care of my patients. Mm-hmm. And I just think it's a really exciting time to mm-hmm. be in the field of gynecology Absolutely. and especially like uh, specializing like we are. I, uh, one of the things that strikes me about you, I think we have a lot of similarities, but one of them is we've had some conversations about how we think about family values and right. also about, used a term about about being honored as a physician and not having that, you know, that thing put on you about what is the word? Oh, the honorifics. Yeah. Talking about, yeah honorifics. Or, yeah. 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 Rather than, I mean, obviously being a physician, I consider that an honor that I, that I want to hold myself to the standard that, that, you know, that not just in society, but also in the aspect of caring for people and, and really interacting with people on a day to day basis. I'm not. I'm not your doctor. I'm Sonia first. I'm. I'm who I am, and and everything that makes me. And I want to be that person. Of course, I'm the physician in the room that you know I see you in, in the operating room that I take care of you. But really and truly, as a friend, as a human being, sitting side by side with someone and hearing the problem that they have, because that's something that in women's care, exactly what you said, that we're not just men with hormones. Yeah. And a lot of the new things that have come out about endometriosis, chronic pelvic pain, and where before things were dismissed as related to psychiatric issues right. or depression. And really, it's been more recent times that we've found the medical reason behind these the things. physiology. And it, absolutely. And, and I want to hear people as, you know, the story that they tell and what they communicate. And because I recognize that that is really what's going to help treat people. Well, I think that's part of why we've been a good fit. I think Mm -hmm. there's lots of reasons why we've kind of hit it off. Mm -hmm. And and I'm really excited about this. I think we have the similar kind of attitude in taking care of people. In fact, I have a lot of times patients will come in and they'll be 
They'll say, like, you're the first doctor that ever really listened to me. It's typical for an endometriosis patient yes. to go through at least seven or eight. Right. And I'm seeing more of my referring docs reaching out to me going, I don't know how to handle this. Or yeah. the the other doctors this patient has seen don't know how to handle this. Do you have this level of care for us? I'm starting to see that kind of question come in through our Instagram and our sure. Facebook. So the media is helping us reach people to get them the care that they need. Mm-hmm. And I love your, your, I don't want to call it humility because it's not like this false sense of like, it, it's just, you, you're a really natural person that's easy to talk to. And I think that's um, part of what patients need, especially when they're coming into a practice like ours for sure. surgery. They they haven't been with us for 20 years. They're coming right. in right. to meet us for the first time. And it's important to me that they feel comfortable, kind of get to know us from this video mm-hmm. being mm-hmm. shown on the TV and the, in the uh, waiting room so that they see us as real people. Right. Thank you. I appreciate that because that's what I want to communicate. I don't, you know, I don't want to be this unapproachable um, shell of a person that yeah. is just a role, but I want to be, you know, someone that people can trust and yeah. people can see that I want the best for you. I want, you know, yeah. whatever is going to fix the problem that you came in with. Yeah. yeah. So we have that in common, but we also have two other things in common that we found <laughs> yes. out at lunch. We had lunch before this, like I usually do. Those of y'all who have been with us know that we usually do a mostly whole food plant-based Lunch. It was before. delicious, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. It's fun. We did a French yeah. pasta thing. We'll put some B-roll up for that. But during that, we found out we have two other things in common, which yes. I thought were pretty random. <laughs> yes. Funny. So the Scuba diving was the a news too. Yes. Right? Yeah. So when I lived in South Florida, it was um, during training, I did get scuba certified. I did one of those, uh, one of those out of, you know, in yeah. Mexico dives that yeah. you know, hopefully you survive. And right. then I did. <laughs> yeah. And then I was hooked. And so I got, um, I got scuba certified and oh i love it it's love super it. cool it's a whole different world down there it's really yeah. amazing it's like yeah. flying right yeah so i've always loved the water and i'd always wanted to get scuba certified i only did about five years ago uh-huh. and um uh, it's just really cool and then i've taken some of my kids to learn how to and my baby ryan uh-huh. who's at AM now my baby he's like 22 <laughs> um he wants to now be a um um, marine biologist. That's incredible. Because he just loves the whole thing. Yeah, so I'm incredible. so proud of him. It's pretty cool. And then yeah. the, the other thing that we had in common is what I'm kind of embarrassed about. <laughs> but y'all need to know that we're human too and we have our flaws like <laughs> Diet Coke, man. Oh, uh, man. <laughs> right? <laughs> so yes, right now it's true. I'm down to like the little cans, a couple sips maybe before <laughs> clinic, which is twice a twice a week. I'm not down to that. <laughs> <laughs> But y'all, there, we know there's nothing good in that. No. Like, the, and it, it's all chemicals. Sweet, gives me headaches. Like, there's no nutrition <laughs> right, in it. No. But um, I just, yeah, I think that's funny. I uh, told the story of how I got through medical school yes. and, on Diet Coke because I used to drink a six pack a day. Yeah. Because <laughs> I didn't drink coffee until yeah. I was in residency. So I think that may be what's also in common because I really didn't, I don't drink coffee very often. Yeah. And so I think it was when you're tired, okay, I need a little pick me up. Yeah. And, and if you don't drink coffee, you don't care for the taste of it. I think at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Diet Coke was an alternative. Yeah. Right. It was pretty bad in, in grad school, actually. One of our friends would know if I needed, they'd, they needed a favor from me, they'd bring me a bag of Jolly Ranchers and a Diet Coke. <gasps> Terrible combination on the teeth. <laughs> Ask my dentist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so don't be like us. Don't, don't, don't. Don't, don't be drinking those sodas. Oh, just and then I have give, had to give up Jolly Ranchers because teeth. Sugar. Teeth, yeah. Teeth, yeah. teeth. teeth are important. Yeah. <laughs> I love Jolly Ranchers. Oh, it's been a long time since I thought about yeah. that. That's funny. <laughs> so what we're replacing that with are things that are healthier. Yes, yes. And so uh, one of the things that we just started launching recently for our, our practice is the vitamin line called Virtuosa mm. Vitamins. You can go to virtuosavitamins.com and we'll put those uh, tags in the notes below. But we've developed this vitamin line. I'm going to be doing a full show on this within the next couple of weeks. My producer, Starly, is like, like saying like today, she wants that recording. <laughs> um, it's not a thousand different vitamins. We are launching the world's first boutique, boutique curated vitamin line is what we're calling it. Um, we have 12 products, maybe adding a, a few more. But what we've done is we've used a manufacturer that I've used for um, about two decades. 
um, that follows FDA manufacturing guidelines so we know That's the quality huge. of the product is there. And we've rebranded their product to our own branding, but we've um, modified the the packaging so that you have what you need all dosed correctly oh, yeah. in the packs. And then um, all the pieces of the 12 different vitamins that we have fit together. And so you don't have to worry about overdosing or double dosing or not having the right thing. And and for me, that was important. Those are the two things my patients kept coming in mm-hmm. and asking, which was, you know, what do I need to take? And right. beyond just eating more whole food, plant-based, sure. getting your good sleep, getting your exercise, doing your stress management, supplementing what you're not getting with high quality supplements and making sure that you're getting the right thing and not overlapping them. So yeah. we uh, we had an interesting little talk. I'm excited that you have some ideas along those lines about some products that we haven't created yet yeah. in our line. Yeah. I'm not going to I'm not going to spoil that now. I'm just going to tell y'all we may add one or two or maybe three products in the next year as we get going. So this, the website is new. The store is new. You can buy the product in our in our um, office or online at virtuousvitamins.com. And mm-hmm. please be patient with us because we are going through the launching of distribution and all that. And, you know, that's a learning process, too. But yeah. we're really proud of that. So it's exciting. Uh, it is exciting, right? It's a lot of exciting things. I, you yeah. know what? I love that you have the same kind of entrepreneurial mm-hmm, idea. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. when we started talking about this right. downstairs, you were like, oh, yeah, I've been doing this one and doing putting this together with a very similar idea, like mm-hmm. creating your own set of what needs to be done for specific things. Right. And so uh, that was a pleasant surprise for me, too. So we are welcoming in the new for sure, the new era, the new office, the new HOPD, the new doctor, and a new era in education for women's surgery, both for you and for other surgeons. And we are just so grateful for our viewers who are um, coming along with us for this ride. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your comments and liking and sharing and subscribing. And uh, we look forward to seeing you and helping you in the office and uh, providing you more education uh, coming on the channel within the next hundred (laughs) the next hundred episodes so thanks you guys have a wonderful week and we'll see you later bye